Hey everybody, Hi. this is Ghost Meat, Dave Laird. I'm on the left here, and on my right is? Uh, this is uh, Ibri, or, or Stephen Ibri, um, on the right. Hey Stephen, how you doing tonight? Good, good. So this is uh, a recording from West Coast Nationals uh, in September 2023. Um, it was uh, the la one of the last events before the new ban list on that took place September. That's 23rd. right. Yeah. So we're actually recording the audio here three weeks later uh, of our game that we played, <laughs> and we'll see uh, another video later of us playing each other again in the cut. Um, so spoiler alert, both of these players uh, made it to the top four and got to play in the finals. So look yeah, forward to so that. And I'm sure there'll be links to that somewhere in the show notes or whatever underneath this video notes. So on the right, I'm playing Thule, uh, and it's a very funny matchup. It sure is. Not. We played this three times th that day, didn't we, Steven? Uh, yeah, I'm on Essa. <laughs> So the more core damage I take, uh, the better your life gets insofar as you have things in your deck that allow okay. you to score agendas better. <laughs> so I, I, started, I started with one ice and I decided to use it to protect, I think, a Rashida rather than protecting a Chastuka. Definitely a, a tough call here. Yeah, uh, but that, I is, that is a ballsy move. For I sure. figured it would set me up for the rest of the game and hopefully you wouldn't sabotage anything good if, mm -hmm. if you have the Chastuka. <laughs> So it's been a few weeks since this game. I don't remember all the the lines that happened. Let's see if I do have it in hand. I don't. Oh, I do. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So that was the risk. Let's see if it pays off. I mean, at least this fires. That's bad. But then you can recover if that's Rashida. If I can't get in. Yeah. And try so and I ice did... up your other centrals. Pretty good. So it looks like I we're did doing one, one from, from HQ. HQ. And you can see I have a Spin Doctor in hand, so yeah. uh, if you don't run it, maybe I can get some of those back in the deck. Yeah. Let's see if I have Dirty Laundry and I can go after those or not. I think I was... I mean, it's really hard to know how to play this matchup for Essa. Um, one line of thought is, you know, try and just poke around and try and get to like four points before you really start taking a lot of core damage. Because if I do take a lot early, then your ontologicals get turned on and you can score those really easy points for like one or two or even zero advancements. So either I do that or I stick to the game plan and just go ham and just start sabotaging and taking core damage myself right away. Uh, and it's going to happen pretty fast because your ID and your cards are trying to do core damage to me as well. <laughs> so it's a bit of a razor's edge matchup to figure out for Essa. Yeah, and, uh, and some... Some Thule's are only using the core damage to score those ontologicals, but my yeah. deck is more of a kill deck, um, so I've got sure two is. end of the line, um, <laughs> yeah, and I've got, right. I've got distributed tracing. So if mm. I am able to draw distributed tracing and end of the line, uh, and you have two core damage, you literally have to win in one turn. Like There's no way to right. steal it yeah. an agenda and not that. Yeah, unless I have like a no free lunch down or something. To avoid sure. that tag, but I do not have that card in this list for Essa. Uh, nor do I have anything really that helps me with tags, I don't think. Um, so yeah, worth mentioning, like you said earlier, that uh, this was pre-banless, so keeling was legal for this event. Even though NSG made an announcement saying new ban list, uh, it will be used for US Nationals in LA, and everyone was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> and then we were like, we don't have to play Keelys. <laughs> and then, and then so the, they kind the of rolled little, that back later that day, didn't they? And it was like... The, uh, the video is a little blurry here. Um, mm -hmm. So if you can't see it, that was a dirty laundry into R&D to trash a oh. Bobo, which is a 3 mm -hmm. of Yeah, which when I saw your list in the cut, I was really like, whoa, three Bobos, I remember exclaiming. Um, so that's that's sort of a linchpin card for you, hey? What's, what was behind your decision to run three? Um, so this deck doesn't have a lot of economy. It doesn't have any hedge funds. Um, it's not an economy ID. And oh, so the ability no the ability to still res Nasty Ice from like <laughs> almost no money um, is yeah. really important. Yeah. Um, and I'm on three Tranquility. And so it's just a nice thing that you can always install on the Tranquility and you can still yeah. move it to R&D or HQ if those are the servers you need to. Right. Cool. Yeah, that makes good sense. So instead of having a lot of econ, you have like econ reduction 
with folks. Exactly. So things cost so, less. So it's a form of econ, right? <laughs> so you just ran archives and I popped yeah. Spin Doctor, but I let you steal the Hyperloop anyway because yeah. I would rather uh, get that uh, $3 and only give you yeah. one point. To uh, totally. And now I have to make that tough call of do I take uh, a core damage or do I spend a click and two credits to steal one pointer? And I think what I'm saying on the left right now is is I'm agonizing over that decision. <laughs> and now you're up to 17 credits, which for a deck that's running not a lot of economy is pretty good. Uh, no, I think... Oh, was that 17? Or was that uh, sorry, 12. Did I say 7? Yeah, 12. Apologies. But still a lot. So I've opted for the core damage to enact my game plan. So you got to do sabotage now. <laughs> you get this a new a, hand. This is a funny interaction. I think we had to confirm it uh, with um, the judge. Oh, because I'm presently act. I'm accessing archives right now. So do the cards yes. that sabotage go into archives and then I access those? Or are they like a separate pile that I would have to run in a separate click or something? So we found out that they mill now, and then I access them now. So because I have a nightmare archives in my hand, and I would like you to access it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you would. <laughs> and your the, your list has three of that card, I believe, right? Yes. If memory serves. Yeah. If my score um, my score piles <laughs> haunting me from three weeks later. <laughs> Yes, and Nightmare Archives is a great card, but it is it is three slots that are, and I need a lot of ice in this deck, so it kind of takes the economy slots. That's true. Yeah, it it, it is it does come with a price, doesn't it? For sure. Um, but the price is well worth it, I think, because Nightmare oh, totally. Archives is so gross. Yeah, it's not if you're if you're on a core damage strategy, you want all three. Yes, for sure. Right. And then people run it in PE sometimes too, which is like really truly repulsive. <laughs> but it's three influence at least, so it costs you. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so I'm probably laughing here. I have I have the sound like the audio turned off of us wow. talking during the game. But uh, okay, so I think I'm getting uh, one point out of this run, net one point. So that's fun. Yeah, so I got more money, and I think the Hyperloop damages you as yeah. well, or you have a click to spend on it? Uh, it looks like I'm out of clicks based on my um, my click trackers on, on the sort of top right of my map from my perspective. Um, so just, uh, I think we, we glossed over it, but Thule, when you uh, steal an agenda, you have to either spend a click uh, and two credits or take a core damage. So um, that's that's why stealing... Uh, Asa does not mind getting one core damage a turn, but definitely doesn't want to get three yeah, core damage uh, in a sure. turn. <laughs> her ability is when the first time she gets core damage in a turn, she sabotages two and draws a card. Um, but yeah, you don't you do not want to hit two agendas and a nightmare archives all in one turn. No, it's not it's not fun for them at all. For sure. Um, so you pinned a pinged a nuka from my hand. Um, I should say that this list that I'm playing is um, developed by my friend Ryan from Vancouver, Hams. And uh, I sort of decided a few days before this tournament I was practicing tons of Hoshiko because I've played Hoshiko like almost exclusively since she came out. And she's been great for me. And then I just found I was like not winning very many games with it. Like I feel like the court meta is pretty strong right now, and runners are struggling to find enough answers for like tags and glacier, and they're just pulled in a lot of directions. So I was like, what if I just try this list Ryan made and just like so if corps are really good, how would I just throw half their deck in the garbage and see if I can win that way? Um, so that was kind of the <laughs> the impetus. So I played like probably twenty games online in three days with Essa and was like. Oh yeah, my win rate's way higher than it was with Hoshiko, so I'm just gonna go yeah. with that. Alright, so, and you've just installed a ghost tongue, so you've taken another core damage yeah. in order to get that uh, reduction on events as well as set yeah. That's right, so you gotta make a tough choice here. And then I get to draw a card with Essa after I take a, uh, a core damage, which is nice that the card that gets knocked out of your hand gets replaced at least. So a replenishment effect, which is nice. So now my Chastushkas are, are two credits instead of three, which is a huge reason to play Ghost Tongue, because that's an expensive event. 
and then a sure gamble is probably what's coming down here if I remember right. Yeah, okay. So that's you can play it from four and net five, which is just spectacular. Um, I was gonna say earlier that a nice thing about Nuka in this deck is when you get really low on hand size, like one or two or three, you can't hold a lot of cards. Just putting a Nuka on the table is great because then you can just leave it till next turn and then click one next turn, you can just tap it. And then now you have a mitt full of cards and you can make decisions and base your next three clicks around that. Whereas like Diesel, you have to use it right away and then you have too many cards in your hand. So Nuka is kind of a nice like offshore card draw card for this Essa deck. And you have just put the ontological. Um, I just fast advance and ontological. Install advance advance score because I have two core damage. <laughs> That's a scary card. I didn't see myself paying for that. Did I? Oh no. I don't know. I can't tell. Hmm. Yeah, Maybe my credit is weird. Hopefully, I didn't. It was a. It was a lot of net runner. This day we played was it five rounds of Swiss I think and then cut to top four. And then yeah. I think I played four more games after that. So 14 games in Netrunner in one day. It's pretty good. It's a pretty good brain burn. So I've just installed Vegemont, which Vodka Cat, lovingly, affectionately called, and pinging the Strike Fund from my hand. Strike Fund is a really nice addition to S's package of cards now. <laughs> Because you're taking a lot of self damage and you're getting paid for it now for a couple bucks. Yeah, the strike fund is when it's trash, you gain two credits. And uh, it's funny because we had, for a very long time, we had iPad worse in that. That's probably like a seven year old yeah. card that yeah. when it's trash, you draw cards. And Null Signal pretty much just reprinted it. Um, very similar card with Pretty close. Star. Yeah. but we've never had the money version of it until Automata Initiative, and it's, it's actually been a really nice addition to the meta. Yeah, I agree. It's like two credits is not oppressively good, but it's enough to float you a little bit. And there was a game during Swiss in round four, I think, versus TAC, where I installed Vegemont and I had a 50 50 to hit Strike Fund. And if I hit Strike Fund, I had enough to run HQ through a Bran and pay one. Because Vegemont <laughs> costs one credit to break all subroutines, but you can't build the strength. It's only based on how much core damage you had, and I had a lot by then. So I, it did hit the Strike Fund, I ran HQ, and I stole the one card from HQ, and it was an agenda, and I won the game because of the <laughs> Strike Fund hit. And if it had hit the other card, I would not have, have had the time or money to get in. So uh, I have a new love and appreciation for Strike Fund that wins games sometimes. <laughs> and then a nice thing too with Strike Fund is once you have Ghost Tongue down, it costs zero to play and it gives you net four credits. So it's a sure gamble from zero, which is pretty sweet if you want to spend the click to play it. True. So Otherwise, it's just an easy mark, right? Don't mind it. Oh, and it looks like you've just run archives and sadly <laughs> got no windows. <laughs> so I have nightmare. no points now. Thanks for that, Steven. <laughs> I think uh, this game, I got fairly lucky with the sabotages. Uh, a lot of one-pointers and Nightmare Archive. Yeah, lucky for you, unlucky for me. Yes. <laughs> so I'm just drawing a chess douche it looks like, and I've got a decent amount of money to be able to play it. And I, we don't know what any of this ice is yet. And you've just scored, is that a Stegodon? It is a Stegonon, yes. So, okay. so tell us Stegonon, about this disgusting new addition to the meta. <laughs> it's a new agenda. It's a 3-1. Um, so unfortunately, it doesn't help you win the game that much from a point perspective, but really powerful effect. So at the beginning of every run, I have the choice to derez another ice on a server that's not the one you're on. Right. Um, yeah. If I do that, I get a credit. Um, mm -hmm. I also make all of your breakers minus two strength. Um, yeah. And then the, the so that's part of it is just it makes your breakers worse. Yeah. Um, but also, part of it is I put a lot of ice in my deck with res effects. So mm -hmm. I've got, uh, we haven't seen me res any ice yet, but <laughs> getting there maybe. <laughs> I've got wave, which when res searches for an ice, I've got pulse, which when res steals a click from you. Sure. Does. Uh, and then when I've, I've got ping, which when res tags you. And especially the combination of pulse and ping can often make a runner float a tag, which yes, can be very a surprise. Well, you don't have as much time as you thought you had. And one of the subroutines on pulses lose a click too, right? 
like Enigma. Yes, um, but you can choose to end the run instead. But that's the right. res effect, you don't have a chest. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I'm going for a chest douche here with Bankar, and I'm hitting the Jag, Jaguarundi. So that will do two net damage to me. Yeah, so Jag tag. has a threat four effect that can tag, which not relevant here. Um, but it also um, it can give so you bad. a tag if you can't break the center. Right. Yeah. And I, I okay, oh, so and I the, second sub, the second sub, the second sub does a core damage if you're tagged. That's right. So I think you're taking another core damage here, which is why I just. Uh, so I did Bankar, so I just took two net damage for oh, one free right, sub, right. and so you hit a sure gamble and a steel skin, so I got to draw two cards. Okay. I probably I can't tell. Him. I think I have one click after. So if I had sure gambled first, then chest douche good. Not sure if I had enough cards in my hand to survive the bank <laughs> run. And hopefully you wouldn't run. Well, they would be individual. It's two individual net damage subs. So if you have the that's skill right. skills, yeah. Yes, that's right. So if the first sub hits it, great. And then maybe you have less odds of hitting the short gamble on the next one. Um, so it looks like you just. What was your decision on mill there? Uh, I missed it too. Some off I think. I, I, think. From, I think I did a lot from RD this game and I distrusted yeah. it. Yeah. Um, what gets scary is when once your Akawas get stolen, that's yeah, once then you have you're in trouble then. Stolen, and it's scary. Uh, yeah, up until then, true. I'm feeling fairly safe. So you've just taken another core damage. Because um, I installed Marrow, yeah. So that's so now, three from your own cards plus one from uh, two. Yeah. So I'm using a, the Anarch dice below my ID there to show my hand size um, because Marrow <laughs> gives you plus three. So I was down to one and I got plus three, so I'm up to four again. But I've taken four core damage. So a dice is a nice uh, reminder for asset players of just here's what your hand size is because it fluctuates wildly throughout the game <laughs> most of the time. Totally. Yeah. So for the purpose of ontological, it's now completely free. But for the oh, purpose, yeah, just, yeah. for the purpose of end of the line, if you drop to four, you're okay. That's true. Yeah. If I drop to, if I go one more to three, then I'm um, in risky territory. So you're down to three credits here. So things are. So am I though. But I have a bit of an economic situation where I can just maybe run a lot more servers with impunity and hopefully you don't have enough to res that ice. I do have to be careful with Stegadon though because you can get a surprise credit mid-run, which runners have to factor into their game plan of thinking about what ice can the corp res on three credits. Hopefully nothing scary. I mean, the real scary thing in your deck is if you run when you have two and you pop the Stegadon trigger, you get three which allows you to res a bloop, which is a devastating ice if you face check it. True. Uh, it also, two, there's an... two trash programs and a core damage sub, I think. Yep, yep. And also that up, that server has an upgrade. It's not a tranquility, because I would have res tranquility mm. a long time ago. Sure, so that yeah. means it's, it's probably Vovo either, or... It's either a Vovo or a Mana Garb. And if it's a Vovo, then I can res quite a bit of ice on that server. That's right, yeah. Because both are reduced by two, right? That's pretty good. That's that's a hedge fund right there. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, I think so my, in this equation, I would rather it be a Vovo than a Mana Garm, even though Mana Garm is a very good card. Yeah, it sure is. So dirty Laundry. Some, I've got Bankar on HQ. I'm going to take two net damage here. I'm going to get paid. Right, mad, so dash. mad Dash and another Marrow. I think Mad Dash won me a single game in this tournament where it was like relevant in my score area and it usually ended up in the bin. <laughs> well, like from the car or from Cordon. Oh. Oh, I, in my last click here. God, the number of times that's happened to me where I cannot steal an Ikawa because I don't have clicks left. <laughs> the struggle is real. Yeah, I think in this matchup, um, you can't uh, you can't take that net damage and not be able to stay on the combo. Like I think you have to run through ice with an extra click to spare. Yeah, yeah, that's something that I like. So I have a little notebook that I kept uh, as this tournament went on, and I think I wrote like 
don't run against HP unless you can steal an Nicola after you get through the ice, you know? Yep. It looks like that double advance card was just an NGO, but I put a oh, new yeah. double advance card in there. Right. Now I've got eight, uh, nine credits, so I can... Yeah, I can that's, that's more threatening, yeah. Uh, are there two NGOs or three in your deck? I can't remember. Only two. I mean, I would okay. love to find room for a third. Um, I just wasn't sure what to cut. Maybe the third Bovo, but Bovo right. was very yeah. good. Anyway. Yeah, that's sweet. I actually really, I think I prefer two NGOs to three because it keeps the runner guessing. <laughs> they see three NGOs in your archives. They're like, well, I can run that. And it's probably an agenda because I know you don't have any NGOs. Mm. If they could only ever see two in archives, they're like, well, that could be an NGO. That's a great point. So that's one thing that I think of. The other thing I think of is I don't want it in my opening hand because install advance advance is kind of awkward. But you don't want the runner to trash it from HQ because it's a good econ card for you. So like yep. icing up first and then drawing it maybe on like turn three or four feels better to me where then you can jam and hopefully get them to break their bank a bit. It's like I just got an ontological. That's the good one to get for me. It's the one I want to keep out of your hands. <laughs> it's a race against time, really. Smash Look to me like you maybe milled a spin knocker as well, which is always yeah. Good that's to get. that's your second favorite thing to see go in the garbage as Essa is. You want to see agendas go in, and you want to see spin doctors go in. And if those things go in in the right amount, then you probably win the game. Uh, another thing about Vovo compared to NGO is if you've got a tranquility grid out and you've got some something cooking on that mm -hmm. server, maybe an agenda that you're slow rolling, or I have MCA. Authority, which is the one that you click uh, once a turn for three turns to so attack the runner. Bobo yeah. um, is something that you can throw on that server that already has an asset from Agenda and still get that two credits from them. Totally. Yeah, that's true. And it doesn't have to overwrite an Agenda because it's an upgrade. Okay, so I've now taken the third Nightmare Archive. I have one point that's real for six <laughs> cards in my score area. Congratulations, Essa. <laughs> So Very hard work's paying off. Oh, yeah, Rd's looking like... a little bit slim, though, from this from this point of view. It's true. So yeah. winning on Mill is is not impossible with Essa. Um, Hams did it to me in this exact same matchup at a tournament in Victoria, BC, earlier this year. He milled probably thirty cards. I took a picture of my face down archives, and he won on Mill actually. Nice. Like I managed to get like one or two ontologicals out, snuck through, but. Um, I haven't seen a mill loss in Netrunner in like five years, probably. Oh, I've I've milled people with. I have a, a loop deck, Rene Loop. Um, oh yeah. That plays Augustina, the resource. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. Just play a virus. And, and you've milled got, people like, with that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's got like three simul chips, like fermenters, M, spatulas, all that stuff. Oh, that's and gross. Plus, with you can just keep running R&D and keep on ending it. So. Yes, of course. Yeah. You know, some matchups, you don't really want to run archives. Maybe you're worried about nightmare archives or something, and you're just yeah. like, I feel or safe. virus, just, if you got a lot of viruses. Or the virus. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you're like, I'm scared of the virus. I'm just going to mail you up. By like yeah, <laughs> totally. Scratching <laughs> R&D. Yeah. Okay, so okay, I'm so biting on the server. This is probably a mistake in hindsight. But I have a bank car and I've got a way to break barriers. I think my vodka cat's at like seven strength right now, so I can get through anything for one credit. And oh, so I did not res, I didn't res Vovo here, so that means the upgrade is probably a man. Uh, yeah. Which is real bad for me. And did I jack out there, I think, maybe? Oh, yeah, maybe because you didn't have enough to be on a collar. So it was yeah. Funny. Right, because that was a is that a pulse there, I think. Yeah. And then Marrow Sabotage one, which is something that I often forget, and so I've started just putting like a counter on Marrow or a dice mm -hmm. to just be like, oh, why is there a dice on Marrow that makes? It? Oh yeah, it's to remind me to court sabotages one when they score. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Hermes. It's easier to remember, I find. Marrow is like a bit more subtle thing you yeah. really care about is you get more hand size but it also has a nice little baked in effect that you get to do another little sabotage when they score it's like a built in uh, spoilers if you remember that card from I do yeah yeah that was a good card I used to run three of those in Alice Merchant for, for fun 
All right, so you're on six points here, and I have one. So my back's against the wall. I only have three hand size, which is bad. I think there's still one ontological somewhere in your Ooh, system. Kind of sweet alter Pravada there. Not yeah, bad. that's from Toronto Worlds last year. So that's like the CN Tower. Or is it Toronto Tower? CN Tower, I think? Yeah, CN Tower. Um, with, you know, some kind of criminal flying off it with a high wire. Uh, I think it's an Adam S. Doyle art who also did the alt art for Ingolo. So they have a very similar artistic um, look to you, Which is a prize we were supposed to win at this tournament, but the prize kit, like got lost in the mail or something. So yeah. we're still pending that. I'm hoping to get those man kicks zebra in face card, which is pretty sweet. So one thing to note, um, for the first time in this game, it has been threat four. And so Jagarandi has a threat sure. four uh, effect that gives you attack for... Um, or I have to spend a click, right? Yes. And so yeah. you took a tag. You then accessed and the line from HQ. <laughs> yeah. Fun. And you only have three hand size. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think you still have a click here to uh, clear that. I sure hope so. <laughs> I have one card in hand, so that's bad. Yeah, it's funny that you're thinking here. Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. I don't know what there is to think about here, Dave. You clear that tag if you can, my friend. Oh, I have two more clicks. Okay, it's really hard to see what my click trackers are saying from here. It's true. Kind you are kind of using that. click trackers, but they yeah. blend into this background. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is trouble for me. We've got a threatening install that could be match point, and. So yeah, I, I installed and took two credits. Yeah, so you're up to five. So and if you've got a mana garm in there, that's bad. Yeah. That's not the third ontological, because I would have just won. That's true. <laughs> yeah. I am not running clot in this SLS. Can you imagine? I'm not even sure if I necessarily would have, but I should have considered it. So this is one of the one of the in the tank turns I think where I'm really puzzling through my options of what outs do I have to win this game. Yeah, it doesn't really feel like tough. I have many at this point. <laughs> Based really on what tough the score is. one point in this because what you'd rather be is be at like four points and then you have a real choice of do I contest the remote or do I just try to win on centrals? But like. Yeah. From one point, it just doesn't mm -hmm. feel like winning on centrals is that viable. No. So now it's like I have to keep you off the win is really the... But I've chosen to put bank on R&D. I think I just sort of lost hope on that remote. Like, it just feels too... I can't deal with it adequately. Yeah. Um, and I think I so probably do. So there's a mana guard there, which is like... I don't have the, the time or money to deal with that, so... Yeah. Oh, maybe... Oh, I oh, oh, see. Maybe there's a chance. It's kind of fun to watch your decisions from a few weeks ago and see like how you might change your play. Okay. Based down. This smelled the man again. Been there the whole game. Was in fact the man. All right. Good read. So then now I'm probably regretting putting Vankar. Yeah, because you don't have a code gate breaker, so you have to lose a click to go through the pulse. Mm -hmm. uh, and then if there's, say, another pulse plus a Kawa or something, then it's... Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so I'm playing um, Raindrops Cut Stone for free off Ghost Tongue. I'm going to get two cards off that because two subs are firing, and I'm going to get paid th net three credits at the end. So that's kind of sweet. I really like that card, Raindrops. It is a real solid card. Yeah, really good with uh, Bankar, but also Bankar. good with... <laughs> Uh, really good, uh, pretty good against Pulse because uh, yeah. you can get through both of those subs. Yeah. And there are two subs on Pulse. One is lose a credit for each a harmonic ice. And actually, right. that was the only harmonic ice for us. So that's yeah, so lose it could be sub. worse for me. And lose now you've done a Stegodon move, and I'm reading it because there's so much text on <laughs> that card, and I have not wrapped my brain around it yet. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, I, I can't remember if I needed the dollar or yeah. if I thought it would be strength. Uh, so Jagarandi doesn't have any when res effects, so it's not a typical one. Yeah. Um, but maybe I needed the money. And it's hard. Oh, there's really bad glare on that ice. It's, yeah, there is. I think it's another pulse. I think when you flipped it, I just saw it before the glare hit it. So my, yeah. oh. my clicks are my clicks are very taxed here. I think. Yep. But I'm getting a lot of card draw, <laughs> of rain draws. Yeah. yeah. So maybe uh, I needed. So it ended the run. What what was it then? Shoot. Uh, it might be a pulse, but it just you just oh you know what? So what it was, it was a pulse, and I think you had no clicks left to get through the pulse. That's why I needed to mm -hmm. And I needed to steg it on to have three credits to score, to score the Hyperloop even after resin that pulse. Yeah, okay. so I, I, I scored a Hyperloop for the set. Credit perfect, Steven Ebry. Well done. Took the game. Tough one there for Essa with hitting three Nightmare Archives, <laughs> two one-pointers, and uh, one two-pointer. And only hitting the Akawa when you couldn't steal it. Yes, when I couldn't steal I didn't have a clip to steal. Yeah, that was, that was a... I think there was a, quite a few play mistakes on my side in this game, but... Um, Overall, Essa was really good for me on the day. I think I won a lion's share of my games with them. And so that is uh, one of our Swiss games. I'm not sure what happened to our other one. So our next matchup, matchup was you on Sable versus me on R+. And I, don't, I haven't seen a video link for that yet. So if we find it, we will try and get it linked to this video so that you can see part two. Um, yeah, it, it doesn't last very long. I die pretty quickly. So, <laughs> if, if memory serves, I think it was fairly short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had so very nice. Nasty. Nasty. I think I had a good start. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So stay tuned for um, our cut games. Um, they are titled Finals, I think. So we'll see what happens between Ghost Meat and Ebri when we meet in uh, the top of the cut.